Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Govan here with Secrets of Longevity.com. Now, what do mustaches have to do with health? Well, not a whole lot, but the products you use, obviously, on your face and your facial hair, if you have facial hair, guys out there, they matter. And I've looked at various products, grooming products for hair, face, whatever, and even amongst the so-called health industry, there's a lot of weird stuff people put in their products. Uh, one that I was looking at that comes to mind was all sorts of petroleum products in mustache grooming products or facial hair products. And it's really simple to make. You can save money making this yourself. And I decided to do it one day and I wanted to share the process with you guys. And ladies, if you wanted to make this as well, you can always give it as a gift or it can be used on other parts of your hair. I guess we'll just talk about hair on your head. If you have short hair, it's great for styling. Um, after applying it for myself, you can see I've already got it on. Uh, just running it through my hair, I noticed it works a little bit like gel. It's not as strong a hold as hair gel or even some of those putty products you can get, but it had a better effect than just using straight oil. It, just, it gives a slight greasy look to the hair, but it's not so greasy and limp the, as just putting oil in your hair does. So a bit of wax gives it a bit more hold, a bit more body, and especially for facial hair, I'm quite liking it. I've used beard oil for almost the entire time I've had a beard. I had a beard over a year ago, shaved it off, had it for a number of months again, and it makes a huge difference. Days I don't put a beard oil on, it gets too fluffy for my liking and kind of wiry feeling. Uh, the beard oil, it both smells nice, but it also keeps it looking, you know, pretty presentable. The problem with that, however, is I like to have the sides of my mustache a little longer. Um, even when I before had the whole mustache longer, it was constantly getting my mouth. It was just too irritating at a certain point. But when I had that, um, the beard oil doesn't really give it much hold to keep it out of your mouth in a way. And that's important for when you're eating and just the look of it. Um, when it's differentiated from the body of your beard, I think it looks a little better. I find if this corner bit is hanging down, it just makes it all look too bulky around the side of my face and kind of makes me look like a bulldog or something, I thought. But it's totally about what look you want to create. And the wax gives you the ability to have a bit more hold there without putting like a, a gel product in your beard. That's just kind of weird. Um, you're obviously gonna end up getting a little bit of your mouth if it's around your mouth, just through everyday things that go on. You're gonna have it in your hands. You don't wanna have that getting in your eyes and stuff. If it's an unnatural product, uh, like many even natural so-called gels are. And so applying the wax, you get the differentiation of where the mustache is versus where the beard is. And you can do all sorts of things. You can do the really tight twisted sort of wiry Salvador Dali look, or if it's particularly thick, you can do the handlebar mustache. Uh, you know, you, I don't need to go over all the different styles, but I like just a little bit, not too tight, but just getting it out of the way. And I actually found a little bit on the beard helps as well. Um, the beard oil, throughout the day I find it dries out and it can get fluffy again, whereas the wax from the few days I've been using it seems to have a stronger, longer hold and I can have it a little more flesh to my face so I don't get this puffiness that kind of makes me look chubby cheeked or something. Anyways, we're gonna get right into the recipe making of it. One thing I'll mention first is if you can't find the ingredients in your area, good quality organic ingredients to make this, you can find some examples at the links below of the products to get. Uh, the beeswax, the oil that you would use, as well as um, the essential oils. Now, you wanna do a bit of research. I'm not gonna try and go over this because it's too complex and a lot of variables, but if you're gonna be adding essential oils to get a nice scent to your product, you wanna be very conscientious about whether the effects of those are gonna be okay for you. You don't wanna be putting something on that's right on your face that you could be consuming some by accident, but also having it radiating up into your eyes and giving you kind of like dry eyes or intense stinging. Even just after applying it, you might have it on your hands, you might rub your eye and you don't wanna have that reaction. Uh, there's also some essential oils that are so strong that they'll like give you a burn or a rash on your skin. Uh, so do some research about the combinations you use. Um, basically any of the oils that come from actual foods, so orange, lemon, these are usually from the rinds, uh, vanilla, those are all 
edible essential oils, you could put them in cooking like you would a spice in small quantities. So they, they're safe in products that you use around your mouth or even inside your mouth if you're making a toothpaste. And without going on too long, we're gonna get right into the whole process of creating this product. All right, we're gonna begin by adding the beeswax, which I have in the form of beeswax candle tea lights. There's a lot of different ways you can obviously get beeswax, whether in its whole form, but I found tea lights to be manageable size. The downside is you have to pull those wicks out once they've melted a bit. And then right up next, I'm adding coconut oil. And I'm using the tea light plastic holder because that allows me to get an accurate measurement because you need to do a very accurate one-to-one -one ratio of oil to the beeswax. Now I like coconut oil because it has some antimicrobial properties. It's also solid at room temperature even though on your face it's going to be a little warmer but you know it's a little more solid or it has a tendency to be more solid than say olive oil. Now I'm already trying to get that metal thing out of the bottom with the wick. Uh, I should have let it melt a little longer, but I'm trying to pry it off anyways. And it breaks off, but the wick still hasn't come out, as you'll see in a moment here. Now, the beeswax melts at a higher temperature, obviously, than any kind of oil. Uh, and for that reason, mixing it with the oil makes it melt at a lower temperature. Uh, I tried experimenting with a higher percentage or ratio of oil to beeswax, so like three to one I tried at first, and it was just far too soft. It looked hard in the when I was finished with it, but when I put it in my hand, it immediately went far too oily, and putting it on my mustache, it actually just acted more like a beard oil. It had no hold because it was so close to my face and so warm uh, that it just wouldn't stay firm, whereas the one-to-one -one seems to be ideal. If you were to try to use straight beeswax, you'd end up with visible wax in your um, facial hair. Whereas if it's combined with the oil, you obviously have just enough there if it's one-to-one, -one, where it's soft enough to be able to work it into your facial hair just from the heat from your hands, but it's not so hard as would happen if you tried to use straight beeswax that it leaves visible signs that you've got wax in your facial hair. Now, I'm just finishing up adding the coconut oil and here I am trying to pry the wick out and try and mash up the beeswax. It actually takes quite a while to melt compared to the oil. Uh, you just really get an idea of how long it takes. I think this might be the last little bit of oil I'm adding. Three to three in terms of total quantity I was doing, uh, but you can do more or less depending on what quantity you want to make. You could do different batches if you want to have different scents that you add to them. Um, and also, obviously it's essential to have the uh, double boiler set up. Uh, glass is great because it's easy to clean, so you're not putting, you know, beeswax and oil into your metal pot of some kind. But yeah, you just have it on a low temperature, as you see on my stove there, it's just below medium. And as you see, my little jar there has that lid that kind of holds it in place against the side of the pot, so the water can simmer. Oh, I just pulled the wick out finally there. And I'm just pulling it out of the water to show you the total quantity of what it looks like as it's melting, almost there. It's actually probably taken over 10 minutes to get most of the beeswax totally melted down and dissolved. Now, I'm adding the essential oils at this point. I've actually turned the heat off and I'm pretty much done with the dissolving of all the beeswax. And that's important because essential oils, you don't wanna subject them to much heat for very long. It dissipates them into the air. And then uh, I added three drops of the spearmint. Next, we're adding the chocolate essential oil, which isn't just an extract in alcohol of some chocolate beans. It's actually a steam distilled extract. Um, so it's quite different from what you might get at a health food store or something like that. And um, like the spice section. And then we're also adding a vanilla extract. And that also is not like vanilla absolute, which is just a alcohol extract. It's an actual steam distilled essential oil. And these are edible, but not all essential oils are edible. You want to make sure the ones you're going to use are safe to consume or safe to have even on your skin. I've had essential oils that when they come into contact with the skin, they'll actually produce a rash. They're that strong and potent. One example could be uh, eucalyptus. Um, you, it's great for clearing the sinuses by putting it in say hot water and breathing the vapors in, but you don't want to have it as um, even a chest rub, the pure essential oil 
you want to mix it in with a carrier oil because on its own it's very strong and slightly toxic. So I just gave it a little smell there. You can see there's a little bit of beeswax still melting. I turned the temperature back on for a sec, then I turned it off. But yeah, you want the essential oils in right at the end. And we've reached the point of it all being dissolved. And it's time to pour it into the tin I have prepared. And this was an old container I had with some sort of salve in it. I think it was a muscle rub for sore muscles. And it was just the perfect size. I didn't even really predict that it would fit so perfectly. I even second guessed as to how much I had when I was filling it up here. As you see, I'm watching it approach the lip of the container. I stop. <laughs> I give a look because I'm almost done and there's actually just enough to fill it right up. So that's the whole process. It's pretty simple. Just a little bit of preparation and you want to make sure you have everything prepared before you start the whole process. And there you have it. This is how you make your own mustache or even facial hair wax. And you can see I've already tried a little bit on. I actually took a little bit out and went to the bathroom. Here I am. This I showed on Snapchat actually right after I made it. I twisted it a bit too much on the corners of my mustache, so it was a bit ridiculous looking. And so I found a softer, less twisted approach looked a little better. But perhaps you'll want to follow in the footsteps of Salvador Dali. So there's not much more to it than that. The whole process takes anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes, depending on how organized you are before you actually begin. So this is what the finished product looks like. I've got my little canister here, and it's just Felt to the brim, nice golden color, thanks to the beeswax. And a nice scent. I would recommend not going too heavy on the essential oils. You saw there three of a strong oil, uh, seven of a weak oil, and a medium scented oil in terms of the strength and power of the scent, somewhere in between there for that quantity. So if you're making less, use less oils. If you're making more, use a few more oils. And like I mentioned, there's links below. The beeswax in particular, you have a number of options. You can get the tea lights like I used. Not the exact same uh, brand. I didn't get mine from Mountain Rose, but they're the same size. So you just use them. You do the same technique of pulling out the wick once it's melted a bit. Uh, or you can get the whole bar. One thing to note is that the bars of solid beeswax, they come, I believe, by weight. And you want to use equal one-to-one -one ratio of volume of beeswax to oil. I recommend using coconut oil, but if you have other oils you'd prefer to use, that can work. It might be a little softer if it's not coconut oil, but that's okay. There's still going to be generally the strength of the beeswax there. There are definitely people that have coconut allergies. Um, I've seen that happen where people get a rash from coconut oil, in which case you would want to use something else, obviously. Some other things you could use are almond oil, jojoba oil, uh, olive oil, etc. Hemp oil. These are all perfectly eligible candidates for mixing with your beeswax. Um, and once again, I'll stick a link below also for some possible combinations of essential oils that you could put together. And you can find the essential oils on Mountain Rose Herbs as well. Um, not the chocolate, perhaps the vanilla. Uh, the chocolate's a fairly rare one. I happened to work in an essential oil uh, distribution company a number of years ago. And I learned a lot about them from that. It's quite an interesting industry. Uh, they're very strong, potent compounds and need to be respected in that sense. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when using them. So they need to be handled with care. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, favorite, and share the video if you feel so inclined. And I'll talk to you again soon. Take care and embrace life without limits.